And she was married to a pastor, Pastor Sylvester Ofori, who is 35. She's been married before her unfortunate demise about five years now. There was even a police report in 2016 where, you know, she reported domestic violence. Domestic violence is a huge thing for those of us that are African. Some of us, not all of us. What I wish did happen was he was arrested straight away and he was prosecuted straight away. You cannot predict some of these abusers are very dangerous, especially when there's a threat. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to the Mo Chunk Show and welcome to another installment of Chit Chat with Mo, where we have controversial debates, honest conversation and so much more. Okay guys, today's video is not as much of a, it's a really heartbreaking one. Um, it's a really, really heartbreaking one. We're talking about the unfortunate death of a 27 year old woman. Um, her name was Barbara and she was married to a pastor, Pastor Sylvester Ofori, who is 35. She's been married before her unfortunate demise about five years now. They pastor a church called um, Floodgates of Heaven International Ministries. They're based in America, young Ghanaian couple, you know, by background. And then they moved over there to live and settle and raise their family. Now, it, news came out that he has unfortunately killed her. So he's been arrested um, for intentionally killing, killing her, ended up shooting her outside of her workplace. And then videos came out of basically the brother of the wife. And I believe there was another lady's voice. I'm guessing that's his wife. They were trying to save her from him. And as this brawl was taking place, I won't play the entire video um, as well as sound because obviously very, very devastating, guys. They were trying to get her out and he ended up threatening in the video that, you know, he's going to kill her. And if he doesn't kill her, he's a fake. I'm guessing he was referring to the fact that if he doesn't kill her, he's a fake pastor. I, I don't know where the correlation is, but you hear the brother in the video saying like to his wife, did you get that on camera? Um you know that i'm not taking that threat lightly he didn't want to take it lightly at all it's really sad because in the video as well you can see that the brother obviously very angry was like pinning him down asking him why are you treating my sister this way and his sister was begging him to stop and this has raised a lot of different like viewpoints guys this has raised viewpoints of i guess the number one point in regards to the last point i just made about the fact that she was begging him to stop is that People have stated that, you know, it seems that sometimes women protect their abusers. It is more complex than sometimes that meets the eye because obviously that's her husband. She probably loves him. Sometimes in cases where there's like they have a family together, sometimes you don't want the government or um, law enforcement to prosecute, prosecute your, your children's father. To my knowledge, they don't have children. Those are some of the reasons that I think sometimes that women, I'm not saying this is right or wrong, this is not me trying to speculate what decision she should have taken in that regard, but I, I, I do try and see sometimes why people would sometimes take the alternative route to what we expect them to, especially when feelings and emotions are involved. You could tell that she was definitely done with the marriage. She had filed for divorce in 2018 or 2019, I can't remember which year right now. Filed for divorce from him and was trying to get out she was she was trying to leave there was even a police report in 2016 where you know she reported domestic violence domestic violence is a huge thing for those of us that are african some of us not all of us some people grew up in very loving families where you know fathers and mothers respected one another and they respected each other's husband and wife but unfortunately some of us have seen and some of us have grown up or a neighbor or whatever the case may be may have seen you know, women, and it's not just women that go through domestic violence, men do as well. But I do believe some African settings, let me not even speak for the whole continent, let me speak for like the Nigerian setting. I know they're Ghanaian, but the Nigerian setting, I do know that there was a bit of domestic violence and it was um, not normalised, but it's, it's not the most like unheard of thing in terms of it's happening. I've definitely like seen it growing up. And it's part of, unfortunately, the traumas that I had to un unpack and growing up. And it still affects me to today. Like, doesn't even necessarily mean to be someone I'm in relationship with. Generally, if men around me begin to raise their voice, even in, like, conflicts, 
I get scared because I'm like, not even that you've raised your hand, but it's like, there's that trauma there of what's coming next kind of thing. But it's not about me. I was just kind of making making that point to say how devastating domestic violence can be on the person receiving it, but also the people that see it, the women and children that see it. Sometimes, you know, the boys that are raised around that kind of also grow up to go and go on to be physically violent towards women. It's something that I, I personally can never really get my head around. When I was seeing it, when I hear of it, you know, claiming to love somebody, you must love somebody that you've made your wife and you're physically abusing them. Sometimes when it's obviously accepted and you're um, not accepted, but it happens often. You know the word, it's, when it's common or or when it's common in a broader community, and this is not all African communities, I'm trying to be very careful. When it's common in a certain community, you don't really see it as wrong and you still see that as like disciplining your wife. I even read one really scary article the other day from one Christian man, a Christian blog, and he was talking about spanking, permitted to spank their wives according to scripture, which is completely, that's nonsense, like that's rubbish. Do you know how dangerous that is to give people a license through your blog? Um, to go and start spanking their wives in the name of the Bible. My thoughts are a bit jumbled because, you know, this is a very sensitive matter and it's also quite triggering for me as well. Another take that some people have said is that, you know, she was apparently cheating and somebody narrated a whole story. Imagine if she was cheating, she was cheating in your house, da, 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 da. and it was just like, all of this is air. None of that needs to lead to him killing her, especially in the way that he did shot her outside her workplace, stood over her and shot her seven more times with some shots going to her head. He wanted to kill her and kill her brutally. If somebody is cheating on you, if you cannot stand it, some people will stay, but if you cannot stand it, you leave. The marriage breaks up. That's something I find about these domestic abusers. They don't want to leave the woman alone. Obviously, and like I said, I started video. It's not just women, but we're talking about a woman that got murdered. But sometimes like they just don't want to leave the woman alone. She doesn't want to do it again. It's not by force, but they will still, they will beg her, I love you, I did, but you don't. You cannot love somebody and raise your hand and be beating them all the time and say you're in a relationship. What kind of relationship is that? They have this very possessive nature. This woman tried to leave. He didn't want to leave her. When the brother came to take her, it's like, it was a kind of thing of, I'd rather you die than leave me. And it's like, but you're not treating her well. Does it make sense that she stays in your house? But anyway, this is what we see. Um, with these domestic abusers. Sorry, I was, um, it just makes me really angry, guys. There was also the bit where, you know, the aftermath of this coming out on social media is that his congregation, the church has responded, responded, and a lot of them are blaming it on the devil, saying that it's a demonic attack, saying it's witchcraft. Actually, it was also revealed that somebody told him, Sylvester, the man, that his wife is a witch, and that's why he changed towards her. Do you know how many marriages, and those of you that are African and I've heard about this happening, do you know how many marriages your wife as a witch has ruined? And this is not me dismissing what he did. He, oh, he needs to be held accountable for that. But all these prophets that have been prophesying that somebody's wife is a witch, somebody's husband, somebody's mother-in-law, oh, God will judge you people because you don't know how many homes that you've incited this kind of evil in with people that don't understand their rights in Christ, people that don't understand that some of these things are just made up, people that worship pastors and take their word for it. You don't know how much damage you're causing by sending those kind of prophetic words about somebody's marriage, somebody's partner. You don't know what you've incited. And it, the members are saying that witchcraft, demonic attack, you know, we've spoken about this with the Pastor John Gray situation. You know, we mentioned that there's one thing the church does is forgive a man. Um, it's never him. It's always a demon outside of him that's making him do that. That he's really a sweet, kind um, man. Even his spiritual father, I read an article today just after church. His spiritual father, let me just get the name for you so I say it correctly. His spiritual father, um, prophet Elisha Salifu Amoako, said that he believes this was a calculated witchcraft attack on him that he's actually a very sweet man and the devil can use anybody i mentioned before with the pastor john grace situation you guys should go check that video out if you haven't seen it already accountability and grace god will always forgive you so much so long as you repent 
So as long as you ask forgiveness, God will always forgive you. But that doesn't mean you evade the earthly consequences of your action. And sometimes those consequences look like jail time. You can still read your Bible in a prison cell. You know, you can go there and reflect. God will still forgive you. You are going to make heaven if God forgives you. But the earthly consequences, if I steal and they arrest me, I cannot say, God has forgiven me. Don't arrest me. There is still a law that binds earth. So we can be gracious in the sense of we understand that he's going to be forgiven by God if he asks for forgiveness and he's truly repentant. But he can also do some jail time for his actions. That's not the devil. That's not, that's called a consequence. There were also some takes around the whole just leave. And like I said, this lady was trying to leave. But even when women try to leave, you can see what happened. It's not always as simple. I just wish, obviously, I, I can't say, you know, it kind of makes me really like tearful, guys. I can't say what she should have, should have, should have, sh what she should or shouldn't have done. But what I wish did happen was he was arrested straight away and he was prosecuted straight away. You cannot predict some of these abusers are very dangerous especially when there's a threat oh my goodness especially when there's a threat they need to go that could have the video was enough for them to arrest him restraining order but of course evil people will always go out of their way to do evil that's one thing i wish i wish he was prosecuted i wish they arrested him i wish they were you know i wish the police didn't have to come and collect her corpse is what I'm trying to say. I wish the first time the police were called, apart from the DV um, report in 2015, 2016, I wish they, they were called as he made that threat and she was better protected. Her family tried. Her family really tried. I, I, my deepest concern is the family of Barbara. Um, and I pray that her soul rests in perfect peace. Domestic violence is a really sensitive subject. And it was one, it was one thing that was predicted that it would be on the rise in lockdown. Obviously, partners, especially being together at home in the same space, more chance for things, fights to happen, physical violence to happen. Um, and it's just, it's really sad that we had to hear about yet another woman, another African woman that, you know, went in such a tragic way because of what Yoruba's call Igbono Ara. I really hope you know, he is prosecuted correctly. Obviously, this was an impromptu video. And if there is an update, I'll speak about it in another episode. But yeah, you guys let me know what you think about the situation. Obviously, very devastating. How should um, people handle domestic violence, the family, even the person? And just offer your condolences where you can, of course, as well. Yeah, I guess it's just another, like, just to emphasize that men of God are still men, they should still be held accountable, you know, religion has done a number on Africans, a, a serious number on Africans, how can someone kill someone in broad daylight, someone they've been assaulting in their house for years, and you're coming to tell me that it was a demonic witchcraft attack, can you people just stop for one second, you don't have to follow a man blindly, that's not even who leads you to heaven, Jesus does, that's who the author and finisher of your faith is. And this is not me here to bash pastors and say that pastors have to be perfect. They don't have to be perfect. But we can't keep excusing inexcusable behaviour and blaming the devil all the time. We have to hold people to account. Otherwise, they will carry on repeated, repeatedly perpetuate bad behaviour. It's like a child. It doesn't matter how much you love your child whatever discipline you choose to do with your child you will discipline them it's not oh i just love you so much go and break that cup again no you tell them come on you stop that i mean depending on how you want to tell your child off but you understand little by little the child will start understanding adults are the same you train people how to behave but when you keep letting them get away with it bad behavior continues i really need the church to get better with this Jesus did not die for this. Jesus did not die for this. He didn't die for us to be following spiritual leaders blindly. We're meant to be submissive, yes, but bad behavior fries when we cover it, when we excuse it. And to his detriment, imagine if the spiritual father that he said is a witchcraft attack 
the, the wife told him something was up. All he did was tell his spiritual son to be careful that there's, a, there's an attack coming. That they should have separated them straight away and gotten him some help. Those people don't stop. Once a, once a man hits you once, he will beat you again. I did see a video of him like preaching, sounding to some people like he's anointed. And it just made me realize and we remember that it's, Christianity is not by all this spiritual acrobatics. I'm speaking in tongues like you're a, you're a machine gun. It's not about spiritual acro acrobatics. That has its place. Prayer has its place. Preaching has its place. But your character, that's what the Holy Spirit refines daily. If that's not happening, I don't know. I can't, mean, I can't say someone's salvation status, but let's just not, let's be informed now. If anything, let's be informed that that's not the sign of a true Christian. It's in your character and character over time. The consistency in your character. People make mistakes, but what is the consistency of your character? Or what is consistent in your character? Another thing that people, you know, were saying, and I'm sure some of his members believe as well, oh, he was so nice to me. That's one thing about abusers, they don't show it to everybody. They only show it to the people they're abusing. So don't vouch for anybody in this world. If someone comes to you and tells you that someone is abusing them, please investigate. Don't just dismiss it because of what you know about their character. Especially physical violence, it can eventually lead to death. Guys, let me know your thoughts. This was a very um, all over the place video. But I just really wanted to come and share my thoughts and also offer condolences and may she rest in perfect peace. Very, very sad. That's all I have for you guys in terms of chit chat with Mo. Um, um, make sure you like so if you liked it, share it, and subscribe to this channel for more. Until next time, guys, peace and love, peace and chunks. Yeah.